I love running. But more than I love running, I love winning. I love everything about it. I love that feeling of being ahead in a race. No one can keep up with me because I'm the best. I cross the finish line. I win. I'm crown champion. Everyone else is disappointed. But more than I love winning, I hate losing. I hate that feeling of being ahead in a race. No one can keep up with me, but I can feel my competitor's breath on the back of my neck as they pass me. There is nothing I can do. They cross the finish line. They're crown champion. I lose. Imagine with me for a second. Imagine you and I, we've got a race coming up tomorrow. We're prepared. We're ready to go. We're excited. We've drunk all the right amounts of water. We've eaten all the right food. We've eaten just enough carbs. We've eaten enough protein. Okay, maybe too much carbs, but we are good to go. We've got the right training gear and we've slept eight hours. We turn up on race day, we kneel down at the starting block. And as we kneel down at the starting block, we are told to wait, just you and I. Everyone else is told they could go, but you and I are told to wait. The gun goes off, everyone else leaves, and you and I are told to wait. We can see our competitors in the distance, but you and I are told to wait. 150 years later, you and I are allowed to go. We go, but there is nothing we can do to even compare with our competitors. I love this quote from Leila Jannah. Talent is fairly distributed, but opportunity isn't. I'm going to talk to you about equality for a second. Equality, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is the state of being equal, especially in status, rights, or opportunities. So simply put, equality is the ability for every human being to have the same rights and opportunities. For those of us that are starting this race with regards to equality 150 years behind everyone else, equality may seem like a distant dream. Personally, I don't have a problem with privilege in of itself. Privilege isn't the issue. The key is for those of us that have privilege to use that privilege to enable bring, to bring others to the starting line of this race that we call life. To use our privilege to enable others to have the same rights and opportunities. I'm going to tell you about something called the bystander effect. So the bystander effect was coined by Bib and John. So Bib and John had heard about the brutal murder of a young woman called Kitty. So Kitty was walking home from in New York City, and as she's walking home, she's brutally murdered in a busy New York street. There was hundreds, thousands of people present, but nobody rang the police. Here, Kitty is murdered. Nobody brings the police, and it's even heard that one woman said to her husband, don't worry about calling the police because somebody else will. I know we're getting dark for a second, but stay with me. So Kitty was murdered, nobody rang the police, and that led Bib and John to think, let's do an investigation. Let's look into this, let's do some experiments. So they did two experiments and they found some very interesting things. The first thing they saw was that 70% of people were, would only help a woman in distress if they were the only person present. So if they were the only person that was present in that moment, they would help a woman in distress. And 40% of people would help a woman in distress if there was other people present. And that led them to discover two very, very key things. The first thing is the diffusion of responsibility. So the diffusion of responsibility is where because there are so many people present, we look and we say to ourselves, actually, there's so many people present, somebody else will deal with this. Somebody else will pick this up. And then the desire to follow others is the second thing that they found. If there's other people present, then why should I be the one that stands out? Why should I be the one that deals with the issue? And in the fight for equality that we're all in, in this race that we call life, in this desire for us to bring others to the starting line, we can all suffer from the bystander effect, where there's so many issues in the world, whether it's racial equality or whether it's gender equality, we're all seeing these fights. And with regards to the diffusion of responsibility, we can say, actually, you know what? There's so many people present, so many people viewing this. Why should I be the one that deals with it? There's so many people present, so many people that can see this issue. Why should I be the one to step out first? I want to follow what other people are doing. And I can see this personally in my own life. I can see whether it's the, the fight for racial equality for other races that aren't black or whether it's the fight for the LGBT community and what they're going through. I can see these issues and say to myself, actually, you know what, it isn't something I should be dealing with. With regards to the diffusion of responsibility, there's other people present. Why should I be the one that's dealing with this? Somebody else will pick this up or whether it's the desire to follow others. I don't want to be the first one to stand out to fight for these rights.
And that thought process is archaic. That thought process is stagnant. And it doesn't enable us to move forward as human beings. It keeps us in one place at one time. And the key to the bystander effect is understanding that we all suffer from it. And we should all try to do all we can to push past the bystander effect to ensure that we make sure that everybody, every single human being is brought to the starting line of this race that we call life. That every human being is brought to the starting line so they have the same rights and opportunities. I'm going to tell you about somebody called Charlie, but to tell you about Charlie, I need to talk about this relatively unknown person called Will Smith. So while I was reading Will's book, aptly named Will, in there he had a story, and in this story he was talking about when he first became famous, when he first started making his money. So Will, in this part of the story, was a Grammy, Grammy um, award-winning artist. He was absolutely killing it in his career. He'd bought all the right cars. He'd done everything he needed to be super, super famous. The only problem was Will hadn't paid his taxes. And there's one thing we know in life, if you don't pay your taxes, the tax man will come for you. And I love how it's a tax man and not a tax woman. But anyway, the tax man will come for you. And the tax man came for Will. He was broke. And I'm talking broke, broke. Not like, oh, I'm kind of broke. I haven't got any money to pay for He was broke, broke. So Will was dejected, disappointed. He did not want to do anything. But Will had a friend called Charlie. So Charlie was Will's childhood friend, and he was now Will's bouncer. And Charlie refused to let Will feel disappointed and dejected. So Charlie dragged Will to an award show he didn't want to go to. And when he got to this award show, Charlie was introducing Will to everybody. He was like, this is my mate Will. You need to come meet Will. And people were like, stop touching me. Stop trying to talk to me. He's like, no, but this is Will. You need to hang out with him. You need to meet with him. And Charlie introduced Will to somebody called Benny Medina. So Benny Medina is a well-known um, entertainment executive. Benny Medina was killing it in his career. He had no idea who Will was, but Benny Medina was killing it. And Charlie said to Benny, you need to meet Will. And when Charlie met Will, who was actually in this period of time coming up with a TV show called The Fresh Prince. So you see where I'm going with this. Charlie um, introduced Benny to Will. Benny then casted Will as the lead in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Will's career was changed forever. Millions of us have been able to engage with beautiful content released by Will because of the hard work that Charlie put in to make sure that he didn't leave Will as a bystander. Charlie refused to allow the bystander effect to affect him. He said to himself, I'm going to make sure that I can do all I can to bring my friend to the starting line of this race that we call life. To bring my friend to make sure that my friend has the same rights and opportunities. And in life, we all need to see Charlie and try to be more like Charlie. There was a Charlie in my life. So when I was in school, I was um, good at being bad. So I was that kid that was always getting everybody else in trouble. I was always the one that was misbehaving and making sure that everybody around me was misbehaving as well. So I would get kids to spend half days on Friday just going out, doing whatever the hell we wanted, and making sure that we were all skipping school at the exact same time. But my business studies teacher, Mr. Wright, saw what I was like and saw some gifts of leadership. He saw that I had the ability to lead others. I was leading others in the wrong way, but he saw that I had the gift to lead others. He also saw that I was interested in business. So he said to me, you know what, I'm going to help you to start your first business. So Mr. Wright sat down with me, taught me about profit and loss accounts, taught me how to launch my first business at 14, 15 years old. So here I am, I'm launching this t-shirt business, I'm learning how to run a business, I'm getting my friends to still take half a day on Friday, but this time they're selling stuff for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm living my best life, my best entrepreneurial life. And if it wasn't for Mr. Wright seeing me, seeing where I was, but seeing where I could be, if it wasn't for him saying, you know what, I refuse to be a bystander, I refuse to let the bystander effect affect me, I'm going to drag Jay to the starting line of this race that we call life. If it wasn't for him doing that, I wouldn't be who I am today. So because of Mr. Wright, because of his um, ability to bring me forward and to bring me to the starting line, I had the same rights and opportunities as everybody else. And I am who I am today because of him. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking right now, you're thinking, okay, Jay, that's wonderful, but 
but what's next? What can we do next with this? I understand that we're, we're all in this race that we call life. I understand that, that we all are in this to try and bring others to have the same rights and opportunities, but what's our next step? What's our clear next step off the back of this? The first thing is to understand that we need to push through the bystander effect. The bystander effect affects all of us. It stops all of us moving forward. But if we can make sure that we do all we can to bring others to the starting line, to use our privilege, our innate privilege that we all have in various ways, to use our innate privilege to bring others to the starting line of this race that we call life, we can change so many things. We can ensure that equality is on the agenda for everybody. So our key steps after this is going to ourselves, I suffer from the bystander effect, how can I push through that? But the final thing that I think we need to focus on is understanding that if one of us wins, then we all win. If one of us takes that step to help somebody else, then it helps us all to win. And if you remember one thing from I've spoken about in this entire time I've been with you, if you remember one thing, just remember this. In your life, always remember to be more Charlie. Thank you very much.